Hello everyone, this is Shanti bringing you another episode of Shanti Fine Arts. Today I am going to show you how I paint this beautiful coral reef underwater uh, scene. I am going to use this for a background for my next painting. However, this itself can make a beautiful painting. I am using Taylor Blue, Cerulean Blue and Aqua Green mainly and also obviously black and white paint for um, the basic background structure. I made a little drawing in first but that's just to give me an idea about uh, how far along I want the drawing to go and where I want to put the corals that I'm going to cover it uh, the entire drawing when I start putting the paint on. So you can see I made a mix of uh, Taylor Blue, Aqua Green and quite a bit of white and I'm putting it uh, uh, in a kind of U-shaped fashion. So it's not like a very deep U, but more like a flattened U. And the basic idea is the higher I go towards the top of the painting, it is lighter. And the lower I'm going, I'm adding more blue to it. And finally, I'll add I'll go like a lot of Taylor blue and then I'll even transition to black. So at the very bottom there will be blue mixed with a lot of black so it's almost looks like black. I decided to start painting on a black canvas so that whatever little bit of black peeks through it does not look obvious because if it was white I don't want the white of the canvas to show through. However, you can paint on any canvas actually because you will go in multiple layers for this background and that will cover up whatever black or white you choose. So it really does not matter, but I prefer to start off with a black one. So you can see that I'm using a one inch paintbrush and what this does is it loads up a lot of paint at one go so that you can go quickly over the areas because this is acrylic paint and it dries fast and you want to, if you want to get a very smooth blending, you need to work pretty quickly while the paint is still wet because once the paint starts to dry or even if once it gets like kind of partly dry, dry and tacky. If you try to work at that point of time, instead of blending, you will actually pick up paint. Now, once this background is painted and completely 100% dry, then I am taking a General's white charcoal pencil and drawing out my coral reef scene. I have a reference from six different pictures from Pixabay and Pinterest to get all the different coral uh, corals that I want us their sponges their sea animals there are different kinds of things and uh, I am not very conversant about uh, underwater you know salt water corals and all that and maybe all of these in real life cannot do not coexist but this is not exactly just an underwater painting it is more like a surreal painting so that works for me at least for me it works but if I am mistaken with coral reefs correct me so now we are starting with the background like the very corals that are the very very back uh, far off and you just want a little bit of hint of them you don't want to paint all of that very in great details because they are far off and they are obscure because of distance so you can see that i'm painting some little leafy structures or tree-like structures stem-like structures rather and what i'm doing is i am i have made a mix of black and blue a little much more black than blue and I am kind of creating a uh, lines with the black with a soft round brush and then I'm taking a stiff round bristle brush and which is partly dram damp not like wet just damp and then smudging out the edges so that it has a very soft blend I want those lines on one end I want the harsh edges but on the inner side I want it to blend softly into the background and you can see that where I have specified that these are the areas where my different corals and sponges are going to be around those areas I'm making it darker now first thing I am painting this rock which has a lot of moss growing on top of it what I did is I first uh, laid down a dark black blue background and on top of that I just dabbed paint 
with a bristle brush this bristle brush having some texture on the of the brush will give you texture on the moss itself now on to the different sponges these are not like the main sponges that i'm painting these are very small ones so i'm just painting like a color and the background which is a darker color made up of purple blue a little bit of black and then on top of that i'm mixing a mixing a color with uh, blues and aqua green and a little bit of white and uh, making those um, sponges in other areas i'm putting in browns and purples at the as a base and then i'm using yellow and white mix on top so kind of has the same pattern everywhere for all of these little sponges but just differentiating the color somewhere i'm making putting in like a brown purple background with yellow on top somewhere i'm putting brown somewhere i'm putting blue and somewhere i'm putting a little bit greenish blue and that will create all the different elements now onto the this big sponge that kind of looks like a flower i don't know what it is called but if you know do share that information in the comments i tried to find out the name of this particular sponge i love it but i couldn't um so and i'm not really very conversant with the reverse image in uh search in google so i couldn't do it anyways how i painted this is at first i laid down a base layer which was like a purple blue black mix and then i am just creating dots all over this with white but i have some color mixed with it it doesn't matter what color you have mixed with whatever is left on your palette if it is yellow it's fine if it's brown it's fine if, if it is kind of black it's fine you just want your white to be not absolutely white you want a little bit of color to it after those dots have dried now i am going back and tinting color on top of it what i'm doing is i'm making a watery mix of different colors in some areas i'm putting browns in some areas i'm putting yellows in some areas i'm adding purples and some other areas especially around the edges i'm putting a little bit of blue and tinting this color having this a lot of water mixed in this color mix is doing what it is doing is it's just adding a little bit of color to those white blobs so that they don't look starkly white anymore and kind of looks like a part of the sponge in general once that layer dries i'm adding a lot of more of those dots and details on top but this time i'm mixing in a lot of different colors of yellow and brown and all of that now i'm coming to the bigger sponges uh, and what I'm doing once again is putting in a base layer of color, browns and purples and blues, differentiating in different areas. But in this case, what I'm doing is instead of just adding a blob of color, I'm just creating strokes from outwards in. So kind of like fanning them out in um, with the brush and then pulling them inwards. Now next, I'm mixing a lighter version of the same color. So if I put a brown and purple at the bottom, I'll mix yellow and brown with a little bit of white on top. And with the flat edge or the sharper edge of the flat brush, I'm kind of uh, creating brush strokes inwards. Now I wanted to paint a few uh, like, you know, those dried corals that they have. I, I, once again, I don't know the names of this and just added a hint of it and now i'm finishing off that big piece of sponge i put purple and blue for the background here so on top i'm using kind of like a mauve reddish color i'm also adding in a little bit of browns here and there to kind of add a lot of contrast and a lot of color because if you put in the darks really dark then when you put the highlights and lighter areas on top they pop up and that contrast is what actually gets the viewer's attention so when you are working on any kind of painting not just this any painting work on your contrast because contrast is what makes your painting tick click or whatever you want to call it some more of the sponges again following the same exact pattern just varying the color so varying the base layer of color and varying the highlight layer of color you can have like a variety of different sponges and different colors underwater now um, if you are noticing something for all of these uh, sponges I'm kind of um, inclining towards a little bit of milder shades I'm not using very bright colors uh, in aquariums and all that you will see very bright 
pinks bright greens and all that i will use some bright colors in some areas and some other corals but not in every one because it's an underwater scene and i like it semi-realistic so it, it will kind of it's kind of behind the water which it has the bluish tinge so everybody everything has a little bit of faded color that way now i'm the working on the rocks i'm keeping this fairly simple so i'm using very um different browns and muddy colors to be very precise and next i'm going to work on these nano cubes i know i I think these are called nano cubes. They look like tiny little flowers, but they are actually corals. And they come in various different colors, very, very bright neon colors and very, very mild, soft, uh, violet-like colors. They ju they're just superbly pretty. So it takes a little bit of trick to paint them though. You have, uh, there are so many different colors in one single um, piece of these ones. Um, like the these floral structures that it, it takes a while to get all of that right so in this one i have a purple center then a little bit of reddish purple on uh, in between and then aqua green on the side and at the very edges i'm adding some thalo blue and then i'm trying to kind of not completely blend all the colors i want some of those colors to stay but you know i still want them to get become a part of the same uh, painting of same coral so kind of creating the striation look so adding some white highlights and then going in between and adding some greens and blues as well and that kind of creates that look next i'm going for these purple ones and uh, I'm not going into great detail to tell you what exactly I'm doing in these ones because each of them are different. However, each of all of them are the same species. So just differing the color a little bit, you will get them. And how you will differ, differ colors is exactly the way I did it. I just looked into reference photos and painted what I saw. So the colors really don't matter. You just want to uh, place different shades, some contrasting looks obviously it might not be realistic 100 percent because all of these creatures may not um, grow in the same area and under the ocean but you know it's a surreal painting so it all all works so yeah when you are painting um these underwater coral like structures use a reference photo that is your the best advice i can give you for this regard you want to be accurate you want to look things to look like they actually do use a reference photo and just copy the way they look in your reference photo now this these are the flowers that i think i made the brightest color i gave the brightest color um, unlike the rest of the painting the rest of the corals which are kind of like uh, more muted colors to suit with the underwater structure now the rest of the corals once again these nano cubes now, now that i'm painting and the, for the rest of the ones that i'm going to paint are again going to be muted colors so kind of creating a var variety and keeping the very bright ones a lot less in number than the duller ones so that you know you have that contrast and the flow through and not too much in the painting attracts your attention so the viewer it, it, it just does not look too busy another sponge here and this one I'm, I'm adding really bright aqua colors because this is the last kind of sponge that i wanted to paint and i thought okay let this have a little bit of more color more bright color than the other ones so yeah if you have some of them that are a little bit more bright than the others then there won't be a contract uh, you know uh, like a contest between all the elements for viewers attention and it won't look too busy so that works so scatter them place them in different areas if you are using brighter colors i'm moving on to the right side of the painting and firstly i'm doing the very distant corals at the back once again in the same way i did the um we did the ones on the other side so black blue color edges and then smudging it out with a bristle brush now i am painting on some mossy structures these are probably kind of uh, old dead corals where moss has grown on top of them 
so the edges because the light is reflecting off them are very bright aqua colors the rest of it is kind of a dull green at the background um kind of a muddy green i'm even mixing some purples in the green and then i'm I will make some highlights on the top, but not very bright highlights. I let most of the highlights kind of, you know, push back into the background so that the edges, the aqua green edges are the only ones that stand out very brightly. Once again, not wanting to create too much of a contest for viewers attention here. So finishing off those little structures, the insides, I'm putting in a lot of darker colors. Now I'm making these stick-like, stem-like things that I've seen a lot in coral reefs, but I really don't know what these are called. Once again, if you know, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to know more about ocean sea things because I, I intend to paint a lot of corals in future. So please let me know. So yep. Yeah these are the branch like structures the exactly paint like them like sea branches just make sure that the ones that are on the tip are a little bit thinner than the ones that are at the base now i'm painting some uh, tube structures these are actually some kind of a sea animal i don't again it was written it's a tube sea animal i don't know if it has a better name than that but it the tips look like tiny little flowers like you see in the weeds um, and the tubes were a nice muted pink purple pink color and that's what I tried to capture once again I'm keeping them much more muted than um, they actually are just so that everything gets equal amount of attention or other it doesn't look too busy finally i wanted to add one tube sponge tubular sponge and i had to paint this first with um, a gray white mix so that it kind of actually have a base to put the darker or uh, lighter colors on top because if i start putting yellow on top of a black background it will just make a muddy color it will not look the bright colors that i'm looking for so once the that white base is put on then i'm adding different shades of green blue gray in the center so that you know, it kind of uh, hints the depth and creating textures a lot so in this painting there's a not not a lot of blending involved other than the background the rest of it is all matter of creating textures and more textures and more textures and i absolutely enjoyed that that's pretty much it about this painting i'm going to use this as a background for my first mermaid mermaid painting in the next video that you will see next week and till then this is about it i hope you love this painting if you did give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it with all your uh, art loving friends who would want to paint the something like this too and go ahead and paint a coral reef for yourself if you do want if you please um, that's all for today thank you for watching through and i hope to see you next week if you are not already subscribed to my channel hit the subscribe button right now and do not also forget to hit the notification bell because if you hit the notification bell then you get notified every week when i post a new video which is wednesdays and thursdays so until next time i'm taking leaves see you soon